our apology. Oh, sh what did we do? Wuthering way. Can we talk about how he looks like the Jesus Christ of Gacha Gaming right here? And to be honest, Dong kind of is. He died. He died for Genshin Impact Sins, and he gave us the greatest Gacha game ever fing made. Dave's six month anniversary was one of the greatest gifts that could have been given to the player base. True. The biggest dump of content we've ever seen in preparation yep. for a new region and version of the game. Dr Dude, they even gave us that Nazi coded character, Zany, bro. That is going to be so bad. Like, in a good way. Like, bad like the Zoomers say. Like, bad isn't, like, good. Bro, she looks so fine, bro. Red, white, and black. Just like the... Well, anyways, let's just not say that out loud. Marketing isn't quite the right word to use here. It's more like mm. a flood. And what's clear from the reaction across the entire community is that Kuro cooked and proved True. that every single harsh critique so when it came to their character design and world building was made far too quickly. The level of scrutiny across the gacha community that this company and game were under since its launch was absolutely absurd. And now True. that Kuro's finally had the time to fully flesh out their vision for this game, yep. it's safe to say that they know exactly what they're doing. It's I think we can all agree that this game has gotten significantly better with the changes that we've wanted every single balance patch. And I feel like people are turning a blind eye to that. We was like, well, obviously the game's going to get better every single patch, right? But the thing is, they're actively changing the things that we don't like and making them better every single patch. Now, not every patch has been incredible, but they've at least moved forward the game in the direction that we've wanted it to go every single update. And I think that's huge. It's beyond fair to say that Wuthering Waves' patches were a bit lacking ever since the huge map expansion we've had in version 1.1. There are a lot of well-justified reasons for that, and today we'll be taking the time to explore what those reasons are. A lot of people have been saying Gotcha's dead for the latter half of 2024. Okay, okay, so let me address that. This is a react video, but no, it's not. This is a video where I talk about if people think that Gotch is dead in a gotcha cast. I don't actually think that. I actually think gotcha is in the best spot it's ever been. Howsoever, I think that gotcha content creation is slowing down drastically. Latter half of 2024. But when Wuthering Waves is just one game in an industry dominated mm. by giants, who's really to blame for that? As always, if you're enjoying this content, please hit that like and subscribe button. When designing Renacita, the devs promised that the entire region would be a co-creation between Kuro Games oh, and the player base, promising that the concerns that players raised across version 1.0, with its sparse interaction between playable characters odd story pacing, and lack of life in the overworld would be answered. And Renacita, with its vibrant city setting, lively atmosphere, and abundance of interactivity, even among its echoes, is the breath of fresh air that everybody was looking for after six months of grinding in desecrated areas like the Deserok Highlands or the port city of Guizhou. When I absolutely agree. There was so many people who were feigning that, oh, I'm so upset that now they're making a happy world in Wuthering Waves. Well, here's the thing. Um, if we've all seen The Incredibles, there's a great line where it says, if everybody's super, then nobody is. You need the happy places to make the desolate places feel truly desolate. If Wuthering Waves was just one note over and over and over and over again, it would get very tiresome very quickly. I'd like to reference Arknight's story where it's just depression after depression after depression after depression. It's like, eh, Okay, we get it. You're fucking sad. You need the highs so you can feel the lows, right? It's very important. The juxtaposition of those two needs to work in tandem, and I think that's exactly what they're going for, and that's why I'm actually very excited to see Wuthering Waves take on maybe things aren't so fucked after all. Okay, like, give me a brothel. Let me fuck three women at once, because two never worked out. When you factor in the massive shift in tone in Braguna compared to Jin Joe and even Mount Firmament... In, in regards to Shorekeeper and Camellia... In regards to Shorekeeper and Camellia, because those are our two wives in game. Oh my god. The Black Shores, the difference is clear. This city is alive, and with the introduction of sentient echoes that walk, talk, and interact with each other, just like people, the possibilities for storytelling and interactivity across 2.0's quests are higher than ever. Unless this teaser is the biggest bait in gacha gaming, Kuro Games is promising Turtle. a lot in Renacita just from its setting alone, and that promise becomes even more significant when we review its immaculate She's so cute. and cast a playable character. Bro, bro, Zany's horns also being pseudo-functionally cat ears is so fucking adorable, man. Characters. Kuro took the critiques of a bland, dark color palette in their 1.0 roster to heart when designing their newest additions to the roster. Yeah, the most gay pirate. blend of aesthetics we've seen thus far. There are 50- Dude, I've heard Zany's tacit mark is on her tongue.
Bro, that shit would make me so weak. Fifty shades of magenta and plenty of other colors on these characters, even if their attribute is clearly something like Glacio. Just like with Carlotta, we saw a similar betrayal of an attribute's typical color with the release of Shorekeeper, having a blue thematic while dealing spectral damage. And the fact that Kuros opens that level of artistic freedom in their designs means that any future release has that same level of potential. And that's just the colors. The outfits these characters are wearing are all also some of the most unique, fashionable, and tasteful we've ever seen. So Baggy pantsuits, deep cut nautical- Because look, no, like, for a look, look, look. Deep cut- Look, 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 look. Ever seen. Baggy- There is nowhere else for her tacit mark to be seen. It's not on her arms. She's completely covered up. Her neck is covered. The only place it can be is her mouth. I'm telling you, bro, she has the tacit mark on her tongue. Or it's between her tits. Straight up behind the neck, it's cut, you can't see it. It has to be her tongue. Baggy pantsuits, deep cut nautical v-necks, and gothic dresses are an aesthetic that we just haven't seen before. It's a dazzling blend of modern design, classical themes, and straight up Pirates of the Caribbean. If nobody in this lineup fits the bill for you, you've got to be one of the pickiest people on the planet. This diversity, True. and perhaps most importantly, departure from- Wait, Zany's Mark? Bro, I'm telling you, it's got to be real. I'm telling you. Where else could it possibly be? Gooner bait allegations can only make this game more and more accessible to a wider portion of the gaming population. Kuros Big checked cat. off a lot of the boxes when it comes to the character design in Rinacita, and the Back reaction to their half-anniversary bomb is the only confirmation we need. These characters are hype. And once again, we can see that Kuros' limited content across versions 1.2 to 1.4 wasn't because of some lack of budget, manpower, or resources. It's because they were dedicating so much of their development time towards crafting this unbelievably beautiful region and designing this awesome, awesome cast of characters. That incredible aesthetic didn't end with their outfits. These characters are also offering some of the most interesting or mysterious combinations of weapons we've seen in Solaris, with popular combinations like gun blades, magical staves, gun blade is gonna be pistol insane. combo, and a tie. All of these characters are promised- She fights with a fucking tie? ...seeing unique attack animations that will vary wildly from existing wielders on the- I don't know how they top Camellia's playstyle because it's so fucking good. It has an answer for every combat situation. I think they peaked. I think they peaked with Camellia's fighting style, but we'll see. Roster. We've seen what these developers can make firsthand, and if there's one thing Kuro didn't sacrifice across version 1.0, it was the quality of their limited characters' kits. There's no Her reason for them into to a stop scythe? now. That would one be of the fucking biggest challenges nuts. Kuro games face across all of version 1.0 was the massive pivot they made when it came to storytelling When do we get to play building. a Scar? According to developer interviews, this shift was one of the hardest parts of the development process across the early months of release. And with that explanation in mind, it makes sense why there seemed to be so little content surrounding the actual main story quest and its progression across the latter half of the version in calendar year. Instead, patches were dedicated to developing the cultural significance of Jin Jo and its festivals in 1.2, the background lore of the Black Shores, the Tethys system, and Rover's past in 1.3, and the reveal of the Somme Noir's potential for individual character story progression in 1.4. While rewriting the story to better fit the developer and player's vision for the future of Wuthering Waves, Kuro dedicated their updates around laying the groundwork and establishing the foundation for the real story in Wuthering Waves, what we'll be experiencing in 2.0. They rewarded their player Why base with one of the best the half anniversary gifts possible. An absurd Did amount of hype for Renesita, driven by the reveal of its incredible cast of characters, and uniquely refreshing setting present in this European-inspired region. With systems like the Elusive Realm, Tethys' simulations, and the Black Shores as a home base firmly established in the tail end of 1.0, Kuro set up the player base with all the tools they'll need to experience Renesita to the fullest, with all of these existing features directly applicable to the newest members of the roster. And with the PS5 version releasing with 2.0- I think the really nice thing about Wuthering Waves too is that there's no like real enormous overarching story, so I can kind of enjoy it bit by bit but still be excited for it because I haven't been let down by a single attempt at their storytelling so far. It's been very cohesive and everything has made sense. The Character story quests really feel like character story quests. It's been very good. It is going a little bit too far into Gooner Bait territory, where even me, where even me, I'm like, all right, dude. All right, I get it. Y you like coming. Okay, we get it. You want to fuck the female. We get it. Oh, Wuwa's incorporation of their skip button. Well, I, was bad, though. I think it was fine. I mean, how, like, okay, think about it. 
How would you even tell Camellia's story without it being how badly she wants to fuck you? That is the only route that you have. Legit. That's the only route. It's the horny, it's the horny crazy lady. Like that's, that's all you can do, man best that Wuwa has to offer in record time, minimizing the clunky pacing issues we all experienced back in 1.0. I've always said that Kuro Games made enjoying their game as easy as possible, and that's only going to continue in 2.0. Gacha might have died in 2024, and Wuthering Waves' uh. backloaded development for 2.0 definitely contributed to the problem. But the fact of the matter is that Kuro Games was making a massive investment in Renesita across the latter half of 2024, and there- It also is really exciting how we got 2.0 six months like not having to wait a year is fucking crazy this shit came out stupid quick like i feel like weather waves just came out and now they're doing a heavy revamp and update for 2.0 like that's nuts i really hope this shit delivers and i know that it will and i'm so excited only one developer in an industry dominated by a giant with a lot more funding advertising and budget when you True. look at what kuro's been able to produce as a result of their investment you can't help but wonder why a company like hoyaverse with three massive titles in the genre weren't able to save gotcha in 2024 kuro had an excuse we witnessed it live on november 22nd what is hoyaverse's where is all that money from fomo fueled banners and predatory practices going it certainly isn't bad Back into the games themselves, Kuro Games openly admitted in interviews the struggles across their development process to the player base. They dedicated a majority of their live stream towards reaffirm- I feel like this guy doesn't like Hoyoverse games. Uh, I'll be real, like, I don't think it's that bad for Hoyoverse games. I really don't. Like, once again, I think it's very bad for Genshin Impact players. I don't think it's that bad for HSR and ZZZ. I really don't, but that's just my opinion. I know people really don't like Zemla Zone Zero. I feel like I'm going crazy sometimes as the only person who actually enjoys the fucking game, but I think it's fine their commitment to the game and their players. They promised that they would listen to critiques and implement changes that would satisfy the player base. And they they did. followed through on all of their promises in version 1.0. And with all of these reveals for 2.0, they've done nothing but repeat that very same dedication. And he's this so game handsome has received and cute. A lot of criticism. I love Some Dong. Of it justified, but a lot of it was completely unwarranted. Many are simply unfamiliar with a developer that genuinely plays and enjoys their own game and makes changes in line with that philosophy over making as much profit as possible. This is the company that sells limited character dupes in their shop. With a developer like this, it'll only get easier and easier to enjoy this game. As always, if you enjoyed this content, please hit that like. Dude, can we get Devil May Cry 5 in Wuthering Waves? Like, for real. Come on. Let me get that shit. Bro, if we're getting, if we're gonna collab that f***ing insane in PGR, just put that shit in Wuthering Waves. I fucking love the game, man. Wuthering Waves has never let me down, and I don't think it ever will. It's a good-ass game, bro. And I hope we get more. Great video, Saint Tontas, as always. Make sure to go like, comment, subscribe over there. Appreciate y'all. Peace.